<laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine, presenting another edition of Shop Talk Live, new platform for us here on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, welcoming today, you can see from his shop out in sunny California, I'd like to welcome Scott Brown, President Diagnostic Network. Scott, how you doing? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm doing great, Pete. Thank you for uh, having me on the show. Well, I appreciate it. Um, you know, the topic we want to talk about today was, oh, my phone, shut, shh. always something, right? That's why I'm doing live. Oh, my people. goodness. Shh. We'll just Technology is awesome door. when it's working, right? <laughs> we'll throw it in the drawer. <laughs> just like I did with the office phone. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Uh, we were here to talk about mastering your diagnostic tool set with Scott. And, of course, as I said, Scott's got a long history helping technicians grow their skills, uh, first with IATN as founder and president there, and now on a relatively new endeavor, the Diagnostic Network. Of course, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But I guess the first thing, just, just from what you got behind you there, Scott, it looks like you've got your own little automotive technical education museum with you there. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so, you know, this is the Sun 947. Uh, you know, I, this is older than I am. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a it's an instrument that uh, was in the shop here that when I came on on board here and, and acquired the, the business uh, and it was used every day up until probably um, you know, early 90s, uh, you know, and, and when you when we moved into the early 90s or actually mid 80s, what did we start having? We had we had uh, distributed ignition and then and so we had a little bit of a connectivity uh, challenge uh, there with with this piece of equipment. However, uh, this is really, back in the day, this was the modern uh, diagnostic piece of equipment. And really, one of them is very relevant today. So you got a vacuum gauge here, and uh, you know, you've got a, a tachometer. And, and uh, so those are, those are two critical inputs that are still used today uh, for, for engine performance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean... I did, Go ahead. I thought I would bring it into the picture here so it would add a little uh, a little bit to our story here because I, yeah. I wanted to kind of visit some history and kind of go back to where where actually the service technician came from uh, and, and then talk about the modern day because you know we've got a lot of young technicians that are in the industry today and um, frankly I, they, they may not know or, or they may not have the knowledge to really appreciate where they actually where we came from as an industry yeah. uh, you know, at the service level. Yeah, I mean, just speaking for myself personally, I remember that uh, when I first started, uh, there, there was a lot more, um, how should I say, labor intensive, physical labor intensive uh, jobs that we had to do. Um, now there's so much more that's, that's pushing the, the intellectual side of the business. And uh, one of the fact, things that I like to share with uh, even consumers to give them a clearer picture of what they're doing today. Uh, and I'm sure you've heard this comparison, uh, but take the F-22 Raptor, for example, probably the most advanced fighter aircraft in the world. And all the electronic systems, all the computer systems on that, on that aircraft, I think it takes something like six and a half million lines of code to make all that work. And then you move on to like that brand new 787, that, that Dreamliner, that huge passenger aircraft, it's eight, eight, eight and a half million lines of code to make all those computer systems work together. And then you could take a look at the simple F-150 Ford, 150 million lines of code to make all of those systems work. You know, and that's the challenges. You know, we started off with, like you say, in the back with the, you know, cathode ray uh, scopes and the, the analog type scopes, and analog equipment. But today, wow, I mean, tech's coming into the business today. It's exciting because it so, is so much of a technical challenge associated with it. But back in my day, I started off as, as your typical mechanic, right? So you had some insight as to where we, where did that really happen, that, that shift from mechanic to technician? Yeah, the, the shift, I would say, probably came, came in the, the late 90s or mid 90s, uh, you know, as we started to get more OBD uh, onboard controls, you know, fuel injection. And the manufacturers started building more precise control over those systems. And therefore, the engines lasted a lot longer. So those mechanical uh, repair uh, methods that we had to use or the mechanical steps were growing further and further apart. 
And, and today, you know, you still have some mechanical repair that needs to happen, but moreover, you need to know when to go in there and actually do that mechanical repair uh, because some mechanical symptoms may be driven by uh, an electronic uh, failure or um, deficiency that's, uh, that's happening with it, and right. which makes it difficult to, to diagnose. Yeah. Um, but going back to that 150, lines of co 150 million lines of code, I remember I did some research on that recently, and I remember, if I'm not mistaken, that was 2015 that Ford Motor Company announced that at SEMA, uh, that their that their platform. So imagine where we're at today, oh and then gosh, on the yeah. development the development cycle. You know, at the manufacturer level, they're working on stuff that's four or five years out. Uh, so I can just only imagine how uh, complex uh, these vehicles uh, are are getting, and and moreover, you know, there people talk about the complexity and all the machine learning and all that, and uh, and how these cars are going to fix themselves. Well. I, I still am not seeing that. It still takes the uh, the, the, the person with that analytical skill set to uh, properly identify what's going on with the vehicle and, and properly, uh, you know, address uh, the, the challenge and, and uh, add add the right repair to, to uh, correct the problem. Yeah, and and the technology, and I know we've been we've actually been saying this for probably since the late '90s of how fast the technology is changing. But it was interesting, uh, it wasn't all that long ago when GM's CEO, uh, Mary Bar Barra, I think it's the way she pronounced the last name, made a comment that we'll see more changes in the next five years in the automotive industry than we have in the last 50. I mean, this is just accelerating almost at the speed of light now that the technology changes. So what do you think currently about the challenges to technicians, either those entering the industry or already in the industry, to to be able to absorb all that, to keep up with all that. Yeah, it, it, that's a tough. Uh, that's a pretty broad question, but uh, you know, the, uh, there's a few challenges happening out there in, in the industry. And just to be frank, you know, the the, the industry has not been. Um, has has not been respective to the technician and uh, the recognition that they actually should deserve and therefore would promote that technician to actually do better. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot of industry challenges out there that just don't support the the technician to continually uh, improve their their skill set. But as we move forward, uh, we really need to look at this because we have a lot of technicians that are leaving the industry. They're they're going through training, and as they graduate, we've got other industries that are pulling them off. And I know we've talked about this dozens of times. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if, we, if we don't correct that, uh, you know, we're we're going to have a huge hole. But moreover, for the technicians that are actually in a in an environment or working in the industry or about to work in the industry, uh, they need to find a, a good shop that is going to support and respect. That technician, and and most importantly, uh, respect the the fact that he needs to gain continuing knowledge and continually improve his uh, his diagnostic skill set. And you know, today, I mean, if we look, you know, we've got you've got the world in your hands today uh, at at the cell phone level, at a at a uh, you know an, an iPad or a tablet or your computer. And that's 24 seven, you can gain access to stuff. Uh, I know that you, you guys at Motor H have some, some awesome training material, uh, video uh, delivery content. And I think as time moves forward, we're gonna see more and more of that going on. Uh, and then also, of course, you know, I, I wanna pitch uh, networking with fellow, uh, you, you know, your peers. Uh, so if you're a younger technician and you're looking to gain some additional experience and knowledge and really exponentially grow your skill set, it will do you uh, wonders to hang around with others that will kind of mentor you uh, into at to, up to that next level. And it's stuff that you get outside of the classroom that uh, that really helps you in understanding, you know, the, the tools uh, and how they can be to be applied. Um, for instance, um, you, you really need to know when to take that particular particular tool out of the toolbox and actually do a test or a validation on a vehicle. Um, you don't always need to pull the scope out. 
you a lot of times need to do some visuals and touch, smell, uh, look around the systems. I mean, even in our shop here, we, we, we just had two vehicles in here yesterday, uh, a BMW and a Volkswagen that had some anomalies. And they were both due to, uh, to, to rodents that were chewing <laughs> on wirings and they were call it, causing all kinds right. of yeah. uh, symptoms. So, you know, you get your scan tool on it and you've got a plethora of DTCs and then you, you need to start really thinking about what could be causing all these crazy things. Because if you go to the service manual and you start reading, you could end up burning hours and hours trying to get to where you need to go and, and your, your visual inspection or, you know, pulling panels back or what have you. Uh, would have helped you streamline that. And that's exactly what our tech did here. But uh, so, you know, most importantly, keep your eyes open. Continually stay tuned to what's going on in the industry. Um, and that's through a number of channels, uh, you know, going to trade conferences, uh, going to uh, uh, seminars, uh, you know, CarQuest and, and WorldPack are, are a couple of our, our corporate partners. And they they are all in on training and they understand that that's their lifeline uh, into supporting the, uh, into supporting the, their, their market. Um, because without the technicians, without the knowledge, uh, we're going to, we're going to be deeply challenged in, uh, in actually addressing and, and properly repairing uh, these automobiles. And, you know, you said, you said so many things, Scott, in that, in that short description that, that really brings so many great points to, to the front. Yeah. You know, one of the first things I'd like to kind of reiterate, you know, you and I, we attend a lot of the events around the country, uh, and we see, unfortunately, we often see the same faces everywhere we go. We, we would love to see new people coming in to take advantage of those opportunities. And one of the things that, that I've heard quite a bit, and I'm sure you have too, you know, my, my boss won't give me the time off, he won't help cover the cost, he won't, you know, all of these kind of things that yeah. we hear that uh, is the, the shop owner is actually making it more difficult for his guys to stay up to speed. So, and I'm sure I'm probably preaching to the choir to those who are watching today, but for anyone who watches this today or, or a recorded version of it, you know, I got to tell you that it, the, the thing you have to have a culture of training in your, in your shop, in your business. Uh, you've got to encourage your technicians to gain that extra knowledge. You've got to assist them in making that happen. Uh, whether you take the monthly trainer video that we produce and you sit around and have a pizza while you watch it, or you give them the time to attend that, that CarQuest, WorldPack, Napa, Standard, class, wh whoever's in town, get them to go to that. Um, and certainly to help them get to these events, because as you pointed out, it's not just being able to get in front of trainers who are absolutely the best in the country at these events. Uh, it's the networking, it's the, it's the friends that you make that you can go back and reach out to when you're struggling. Um, That's and, right. and I want to kind of throw in a little plug for a group that, that you and I are both familiar with. It's the guys that train by text. Um, I, I was very pleased to say they have a, a formalized their mission statement on their website recently. And, yeah. it, and I, and it was, I would love that, that whole concept of improving the industry through networking education and awareness and they've been doing a great job on all of those fronts so kudos to you guys you know keep up what you're doing uh you're that group that's going to help turn that tide a little bit uh, the other yeah, thing that's great go ahead. Yeah, that's great so let me let me just touch back uh so yeah the train by tech guys uh, i i do uh, interface with those guys quite a bit uh and and and, and a mutual colleague of ours uh, george Minshew, um we deeply appreciate the young blood that's coming in uh, with that spirit to continue the, uh, the, the push, right, for that learning culture. But I wanted to go back one step. You know, when, when we were talking about uh, seeing all the same faces over and over and over again, yeah, that is, it's, it's great, but it's also a, uh, a discouragement uh, as well. And really, I think the solution there is to get the, the, the business owners, shop owners, to start to really look at their business and start looking at this training as an investment piece. Um, it's not like you're, you're going to spend, you know, three grand to send your guy off for a week to go to go to some training, you know, pay for his housing, travel, food, and then expect him to instantly apply that. But if you're if you're looking at investing in that employee and he's going to be with you for a long time, that three thousand dollars. So just made that number up is going to reap dividends 
for years on end. And you're going to build a trust base with that, that employee. I, you know, technicians, uh, they like to make money, but they also like to work in a, an environment that's conducive to, uh, you know, a career and not just a J-O-B. Right. And, uh, and if we're really investing at that level, um, we're going to push the envelope and move our industry up the, to the several notches above where we really need to be today. So yeah. I just wanted to check in on that. Oh, absolutely. And then, and then like you pointed out too, uh, to developing that, that culture, I think is important. You know, even if, because we know shop owners are, are, are at different levels, you know, some they have different uh, resources that are available to them. It's so like you said, if you can shut the shop down, take everybody to a national training event, a more power to you. But if you can't do that, uh, bring something in house if you have to, but show them that yeah, it's important and- to do, you know. Yeah, in fact, I, I'm, we're seeing some of that. I, I've seen, you know, the uh, the guys that are. I think it's the uh, uh, and, and you need to help me out here. Um, they they're doing um, lunch and learn stuff, and mm-hmm. I can't can't remember who they who the heck these. Oh, Federal Mogul, uh, the Garage Guru guys, and I apologize for forgetting that, but uh, they they're going out and they're they're visiting uh, shops and and doing. You know, van openings. Uh, I was talking to also the uh, the ZF or ZF uh, folks. Uh, they're doing the same thing where they're going out and, and visiting shops uh, during the workday because one of the things that that I I remember years ago, I used to go to every bit of training I could possibly go to, and uh, frankly, you would end up burning yourself out because you're typically going after putting in eight or nine or ten hours at, uh, at the shop during yeah. the day, and then you're in class until ten or eleven at night. And then getting up the next morning early, doing it all over again in a yep. second night of class. And that, uh, you know, you, you end up learning just micro pieces where if you separate yourself and, and go away during the day and go to class, just like other industries do, you know, whether you're an electrician or, a, or an HVAC guy or, or what have you, um, we need to basically have a culture shift uh, to help support that uh, that methodology because then the technician is is learning um, in a normal cycle uh, where they're likely to uh, gain that knowledge and absorb it and then be able to yeah. uh, apply it properly. And, and two other things to go in line, in line with the same train of thought, Scott, you know, you, like you mentioned, ZF is involved, Federal Mogul is involved, the, the players that have been around a while, the NAPAs, the CarQuest, the World Packs, the Standard Motor Products, all of these companies have aftermarket training resources they're bringing to bear and and now mm-hmm. even more so i mean uh, just to take feral mogul as an example they spent a fortune on building these these regional training facilities and building up this team of trainers and um and, and that's just one company mm-hmm. and why that's not me <laughs> that's a, a train coming by here we've got the downtown metrolink uh, there that, that runs right into la there's about but, 20 or 30 trains a day that come through here. So. But I guess the point I want to make is that, that when I started, or when I was still active in the business, and uh, that's maybe, I was active in the shop maybe 10 years ago now, um, getting training locally was a challenge. There's some areas where guys, they just didn't go to, you know, if there wasn't enough people to put together a class. But I think we're seeing a change in that. There's so many more resources now to get the training if you want it. So it's, it's, it's out there, right? It's out there. Yep. Now, the other side of that is, I'm sure there are techs who are going to watch this and go like, well, it's not going to make me any money. The boss isn't going to pay me anymore, so why should I? Well, you know what? You're slowly going to find what you're able to work on getting smaller and smaller and smaller because you haven't kept up with these changes in the technology. We won't even get into some of the stuff related to ADAS. That's a topic for a whole other day. Um, yeah. But there's a lot coming down the pike as we move towards that, that autonomous future that we're all heading towards that you're just not going to be able to handle if you don't. And for those young men and women who are out there, or even the older guys like us, who are out there trying to keep up and getting the training and, and coming out of their own pocket to do that and then not seeing the benefit of the shop they're working for, well, I know from the magazine side and all the shop owners that I get to meet and talk to, that paradigm is also changing. There are shops who are embracing the idea of continuing education and supporting their technicians' education. So if you're not getting it where you're at, look around. There, I'm sure there's somebody in your community who is willing to help you accomplish your goals. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, another I, way, text, another yeah, way to lead in to accomplishing your goals is like you mentioned earlier, networking with, with technicians who are at that level or maybe a little bit above, learning from them. And that kind of brings us to, I got to share this. I'm going to pull this up real quick Okay. to these guys. Um, yep. Scott's uh, creation of the diagnostic network. I just wanted, I want to make sure I shared this with everybody, Scott, because I mean, just first of all, look at the support crew uh, that you have supporting what the network's trying to do. I mean, these are some top players in, in the industry. I mean, some of these guys like uh, uh, Bernie at Automotive Test Solution, of course, the, our readers will recognize him as a regular contributor. Uh, G. Trulia with TST, of course. George, I keep working on. I'll get him eventually. <laughs> but, but, you know, a lot of these groups here, you know, we work with as, as well, and you'll recognize those names. So tell us a little bit, Scott, about how uh, the the diagnostic network came to be and what is really making this a different networking platform than others we've seen in the past. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, the, my, my focus is really looking at the fact that uh, the diagnostician uh, has not been recognized. And, and frankly, he is going to become the key uh, ingredient to a shop's success. And uh, the, the, the current methodology of, of training uh, and getting guys into the industry, and then there's really no pathway for them to become a diagnostician. And a lot of the, and what we've discovered too, is that a lot of the in-service training uh, comes up short sometimes. And, and in fact, the, that's one of the reasons that we have the train by tech guys out there. They're basically creating training that's above and beyond or, or filling the void for what they're, uh, they're, they're experiencing in the marketplace. So um, going back to the creation of this platform, yes, it's designed for the, the higher level diagnostician uh, to help bring a support platform for those individuals that want to continue to move the envelope or, or move up the, 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 the bar, so to speak. But moreover, we want to have a pathway um, for those that are down, down here looking to move to the move their diagnostic skill set uh, upward and onward, and we believe that we'll be able to create this uh, this environment that will be highly conducive to that. Um, engaging with these corporate partners that that you just showed here a minute ago, um, that was also my pitch. My pitch was that hey, we are not delivering exactly what we need, and we need to all talk to each other so that we can understand where these deficiencies are at and start moving the, the bar forward together. Um, and, you know, there's a, a lot of those companies are actually delivering some really good training, but, uh, and also the tools, uh, a lot of the tools out there are very good, but there are some tool, uh, there are some shortcomings in some of the tools that we want to have these companies recognize and start working with some of our, uh, our members that are, you know, the higher level, um, and helping them bring their their tool um, features uh, up to where they need to be, so that we can be successful together. And I gotta say too, uh, Scott, just from looking around the Diagnostic Network and 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 getting the updates on the material there, there's some great content there, and there's some there's a lot of good um, reference and resource material uh, available on the site. Uh, and there are the guys that are saying, well, hey, I've done all of this you know, work and I'm kind of stumped and what do you guys think? So there's a lot of, it's a good platform to get that kind of thing going on. Um, and of course that's what we had, uh, some time ago, you know, we all were there to help one another out. So the one thing I'm glad we haven't seen is the, well, I've got this Chevy in the shop that's doing this. So what do I need to do? <laughs> you know, it's like it, the whole idea of the diagnostic network guys is, is take your skills from wherever you might be and, move that up one more notch, one more notch. And then as you move up, the other guys and gals are on the network, you can, you can pull them up with you. So everybody in the, in the network as a whole begins to grow and grow and grow and, and be able to take on, you know, the challenges that we have in today's industry. So I appreciate that, Scott, and I appreciate the efforts yeah. that you're putting into that. Great. Thank you. I'm, uh, and I'm honored to, to be part of this because, uh, you know, it's, it's deeply passion er, er, ingrained in my passion uh, to continually move the, the, the industry forward. 
you know, and, and I came into this industry as a technician, you know, I went to tech school and started working, uh, working in the field and immediately uh, discovered that I didn't know uh, nearly as much as I really needed to know. And, and, and then fuel injection came along and computer controls. And, yeah. and uh, I, I felt that, you know, I, I needed to attend every bit of training. And, uh, you know, a lot of that training that I took, um, I have to thank, you know, the General Motors uh, folks, because uh, we're here close to LA. And, and I took advantage of all of the AC Delco uh, channel of training uh, at their GM training center. And that really helped me become a better uh, technician and diagnostician and actually sure. helped me move my career forward and, and, and prosper. And uh, so even going back to what, what you're talking about with those techs that uh, say, well, you know, my boss isn't going to pay me anything more. I wasn't even looking at that. I just knew that I needed to improve myself. And, uh, and then the, the, the effects were that other people paid attention to that and, and uh, had me come to work for a company that I then uh, ended up buying and, and uh, they helped me along the way. So that was, that was just an awesome uh, experience and a testament to, to what you can do in this industry. So it's, uh, it's awesome. Cool. And I know that you have a, something kind of a, a historical piece that you wanted to share with everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this up because, you know, yeah. back in the old days before computers and online access, you know, we, we, the factories were still doing training. And you sent me this pic. I'm going to pull that up so we can see this of how technical training used to be delivered. This is an old mobile album. And I know you have that queued up, Scott. So let's, okay. let's share that with the guys and, and what yeah. it used to be back in, gosh, when was this delivered? So this is 1967, wow. and let me just uh, let me touch on this for a second. So where this came from, uh, this was actually a thank you card. You can kind of see a little bit of writing down there in the lower uh, lower uh, right corner. Um, Mike uh, Reynolds, back in uh, I believe he's in North Carolina, um, he runs a, a mobile diagnostic uh, company, and uh, I he I helped him out doing some stuff, and and so he sent me this record that he got out of a local uh, college and uh, as a thank you note and he wrote on it and I thought I looked at that I go wow this thing is awesome and so I had my daughter bring in this uh, her old or she's got a record player but it's you know it's got a CD player and everything in it and I wanted to see if I could play this and uh, although the record's a little warped and he's got the writing on it uh, I'm going to cue this thing up so you can hear uh, a little bit of this because this is the way the dealer guys back in, in the day, uh, stayed up to date uh, and continued their training. So they would send a, a, you know, a reel. It could be in a 16 millimeter uh, a reel. So they would project a movie and cue this up at the same time. And so we're going to drop this on. And I believe they're going to talk about fuel filters here. So let me turn <laughs> this on. Goes on the switch. will result in the switch contact touching the piston and the brake warning light will stay on. Now, let's talk about the last item, fuel filter, the fuel tank filter, and the carburetor filter. First, the fuel tank filter. Two types of fuel tank filters have been used on 1967 Oldsmobile. Pretty, pretty cool uh, uh, information. Pretty cool. <laughs> so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to listen to that whole thing or as much as I can play out of there. But uh, what's, what's even more interesting is, uh, let me pull this thing out here is uh, the front side was the, uh, the technical information and the back side, pretty cool. It, um, it says spikes other life and I, it says service housekeeping. And uh, it, it goes on, I started listening to it yesterday and it, it goes on to start talking about the culture around a technician. And they basically have the storyline about Spike who's actually a baseball player and he's trying to make it into the, you know, the, the miners, uh, but his job where he's earning a good uh, living is a, a carburetor diagnostic guy in a dealership. And they have a number of scenarios where they, they have a car, a problem car that comes in and they hand it to Spike. It spikes the guy that goes in there and figures it out. And, and then they talk about Spike's work, uh, work ethic and, and uh, what he does in his off hours uh, where he's actually seeking out additional training. So wow. I thought that, man, this is a timeless piece, but he's talking about what we are doing today. 
yeah. and, and over what we should be doing uh, across the industry as yeah. a whole. And I'm going to share one more thing here, Scott, before we bring everything to a close today. Uh, guys, this is actually, and I apologize for the low resolution on this, but this will give you an idea of what you will find on the diagnostic network. This is actually another Motor Age contributor, John Kelly. He's also a, a associate professor, I believe, at Weber University or Weber, 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 Weber University. Weber Yep. And he has a YouTube channel as well. So some fantastic content, um, a lot of hybrid transmission stuff. Uh, and he is also uh, one of the guys who, who or not the guy, that uh, created the software to uh, for Pico's NVH platform. Of course, he has his own. It's right in your phone. Um, so if you get a chance to check that out, you know, you know, by all means. Uh, and you get on there, guys, you'll see so much more of that. Uh, I know Bernie has put a complete series of his on, on in-cylinder pressure testing. And who better to write about that than the guy that started doing that kind of testing in the first place? Um, and, and, and so much more that's going on there. Uh, like you mentioned, the train by tech guys are putting their things in there. And a lot of networking going on between, I'm seeing, between a lot of these really sharp technicians sharing ideas, sharing methods, helping each other through the problems. And really, you know, that's, that's what it should be all about is taking that, that networking that we get at a live event, but putting on an online platform that makes it easy to access no matter where you are, you know, in the country. Uh, and I think Scott, if I'm not mistaken, that if anyone who is interested in, in coming, uh, becoming a member of the network or trying it out, you have some special things for them as well. Yep, that's correct. So uh, anybody that wants to join, you know, a, a, that's a professional wants to come in and take a look around, uh, they can um, they can join and get a seven day free trial. Uh, you know, no obligation. But uh, moreover, I, I hope that you see the value in it and want to want to hang around and, and make this part of your uh, your your diagnostic tool set. Uh, at an annual level, we do have a promotion going on right now. Uh, if you pay for a year in advance, you're going to save uh, about 9% off that monthly rate. Plus, uh, we're going to give you a nice, uh, really cool T-shirt and uh, a couple of other pieces. And we're also going to give you a three-month coupon that you can either add to your account, uh, just extending that due date out, or you can gift that to a colleague or a friend uh, so that they can come in and actually en enjoy uh, three months at, at, at no charge at all. So. I encourage you, any, anyone that's a professional and wants to continue to move their, their skill set and their diagnostic aptitude forward uh, to come on board and, and uh, start participating. Um, my development team is working on some pretty cool features that we're gonna be releasing here pretty soon. Um, we'll, we'll have an additional file support for um, you know, diagnostic tools and videos and whatnot, but uh, Come on board. I think that you're going to like what you see. Uh, it's, a, it's a modern platform. Uh, it'll work on pretty much any device, uh, anything with a modern, uh, you know, on your cell phone. It's got a modern browser. It's going to work just fine. Um, and really, uh, this is my, my big pitch here is that um, if you're a diag tech or one that wants to get to that next level, if you spend 10 to 20 minutes a week on here, um, you're going to walk away uh, a smarter individual. And you're going to stay on top of what's happening in this industry, uh, increasing your situational awareness, uh, whether it has to do with uh, uh, training uh, that, that becomes available, or perhaps there are uh, things that are happening in the industry, uh, like we talked about the ADAS, uh, uh, that, that whole landscape is really coming at us hard. And it's uh, you know, not only from a legality or a liability aspect, but also the serviceability and uh, where we should be able to address these systems because there are vehicles that actually come into my shop here that after a certain procedure gets done, say a wheel alignment, you are supposed to do certain things to that vehicle. And sometimes even the factory service information isn't too clear on that. And so uh, these are all great topics for discussion. And uh, if you wanna learn more, please uh, check it out, diag.net. Well, Scott, again, thanks so much for coming out and, and hanging with us at Shop Talk Live today. I'm sure that uh, the folks who are watching appreciate it. And I want to thank all of you who got out and watched it with us today uh, for coming out and, and doing that. Uh, I have been trying to keep an eye on everybody's comments. I'm sorry that I can't you know, respond to everybody as we go along. We'll try to work on that going forward as we explore this new platform. 
of helping you, the automotive service professional, handle the challenges uh, for the next decade to come. So, Scott, thanks so much for coming out. Hey, thank you, Pete, for having me on. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate everything you do for the industry, and uh, we want to keep on keeping on, okay? You betcha.